Formula One could possibly be the toughest sport to break into. You need talent, luck and money to be on your side for multiple years to finally get recognized and be considered for a spot on the grid. And when you're there, you end up in a waiting room along with dozens of other drivers wanting to join the grid and fulfill their dream. So surely, when the opportunity arises, you'll grab it, right? That's exactly what Liam Lawson did last weekend. Although he wasn't a big fan of the circumstances needed to get there, he was happy he finally got his shot. And when thinking about it, this shot could be exactly what Alpha Tauri and Red Bull might have needed to figure out who will still be driving for the two teams next year. So, what could Alpha Tauri and Red Bull possibly win from Ricardo's horrible and unlucky injury? Well, they now have the time to make their new master plan. We'll call it the Liam Lawson master plan. And we'll fill you in on what that might mean for both teams. But first, how long will we miss Ricardo? Well, Red Bull advisor Helmut Marco has delivered a concerning update on Daniel Ricardo's hand injury, which forced him to withdraw from the Dutch Grand Prix. As we all know, during the second free practice session, Ricardo crashed at turn three and broke a metacarpal in his left hand. On Sunday, the Austrian driver underwent successful surgery in Barcelona, but Marco claims that the breakage is more difficult than the team initially assumed. Unfortunately, the fracture is complicated. It's not a straight fracture, he said. Red Bull team principal Christian Horner earlier stated that Ricardo will most likely compete in the Singapore Grand Prix. However, Marco believes that this is now a remote possibility. In all likelihood, the Alpha Tauri driver will also mix the next two races in Italy and Singapore. We'll get confirmation from the doctor, but it looks bad for the next two races. Alpha Tauri CEO Peter Bayer added, I spoke with his manager. The surgery went well, even if the fracture was more complicated than expected. He'll stay in Barcelona for a few days for observation. We wish him all the best. Ricardo was reportedly treated by famous MotoGP doctor Xavier Mir after undergoing surgery and metalwork in Barcelona on Sunday. This is the same doctor that performed surgery on Lance Stroll at the start of the season, so a fast recovery is expected. So while Daniel Ricardo recovers from a broken hand, Liam Lawson will drive for the Alpha Tauri Formula 1 team at this weekend's Italian Grand Prix, and possibly in Singapore as well two weeks later. And this is exactly what enables the Red Bull group to perform their master plan. Alpha Tauri stated on Monday that Lawson will fill in for Ricardo until he is fully fit. In a statement, the team said, We are delighted that Daniel's surgery went well and that he is now on the road to recovery. We hope to see him at the track again very soon, but until he's fully fit, we can confirm that Liam, who did a good job in difficult conditions in Zandvoort, will continue to drive alongside Yuki, starting from our home race this weekend in Monza. Lawson made his Formula 1 racing debut on Sunday after participating in three FP1 sessions with Red Bull and Alpha Tauri last season. The Super Formula Championship contender finished 13th in the Dutch GP, ahead of teammate Yuki Tsunoda, who finished 16th. On Sunday, Alpha Tauri boss Franz Tost said that Lawson will be taken to the simulator this week ahead of the Monza race. Ricardo's setback comes before a busy race schedule. The Italian Grand Prix takes place this weekend, followed by a week off before the Singapore and Japan doubleheader. Speaking after his operation, Ricardo posted on Instagram, Hey everyone, had surgery this morning, got my first bit of metal work, so that's pretty cool. Big thanks to everyone who reached out and kept my spirits up. This ain't a setback, just all part of the comeback. Red Bull team principal Christian Horner stated that Ricardo hoped to return to racing in Singapore, but added that nature will take its course. He said that's the thing he was most frustrated about, talking with him last night. He's just taken a bunch of time off, just getting his mojo back, getting back into it and now he's on the bench again. That was, I think, his frustration. I think he felt that the car, they've started to make some progress and it's a shame for him. But I'm sure at the back of his mind, he's probably got Singapore as a target. But then again, Singapore is probably one of the most tough circuits on the calendar, but nature will take its course. He added, it's quite a clean break, and then of course, it's all about the recuperation and how long that takes. Any normal human being would probably be about 10 to 12 weeks, but we know that these guys aren't normal. So it will be about the recovery process, how long that will take. Is it going to be three weeks, a month? Is it six weeks? Nobody really knows. Warner is right, the Formula 1 drivers are different human beings and are known for their fast recovery. So when can we expect to see Ricardo again? Japan seems to be the most likely option in a couple of weeks. And although it might be a shame for Ricardo and his fans, it did provide Red Bull and Alpha Tauri with a unique chance. So what is their master plan, I hear you thinking? Well, see. Alpha Tauri started the season with Yuki Tsunoda and Nick De Vries, and everyone knows what happens next. De Vries had to go after only 10 races, opening a spot for someone else. 
And this is where Red Bull's first master plan came alive, as this proved to be the perfect opportunity to test one of their reserve drivers. This turned out to be Daniel Ricciardo, as Liam Lawson was stuck in a bid for the championship in Super Formula. Subbing in Daniel Ricciardo gave Red Bull and Alpha Tauri another driver to benchmark Yuki Tsunoda, but even more importantly, it gave them another driver to test and see perform to possibly take over Perez's seat at Red Bull. But with Liam Lawson now also joining the grid for up to three or four races, Red Bull and Alpha Tauri have been granted another driver to test. And this is where their second master plan comes in, as they've now been granted to benchmark Lawson against Sonoda, De Vries, and Ricardo. This gives Red Bull the data of six drivers in merely one season. To some, this might just look like a bad course of fate, but to Red Bull, it could be exactly what they needed. This gives them enough data to see if one of the Alpha Tauri drivers could take over Perez's seat and outperform him next year. And since Perez has a clause to not drive for Alpha Tauri, the other two drivers could stay at Alpha Tauri. Are you listening, Checo? In the end, this weird twist of fate could cost Perez his seat. Strange how things can go in Formula 1, right? But is Lawson up for the test? Could he prove himself to Helmut Marco and Christian Horner? Let's look at Lawson's take on his debut. Lawson qualified last for the race at Circuit Zandvoort, although the Red Bull Racing youngster also had only one free practice session following Ricardo's retirement. Lawson finished the Grand Prix in 13th place, ahead of his teammate Yuki Tsunoda. The brand new Alpha Tauri driver reflects on his race debut. It was a little bit sketchy. Conditions were all over the place, rolling up to the grid it started raining. It definitely wasn't the best feeling. But throughout the race, I was obviously learning a huge amount. The first part wasn't the best, we lost a lot of time with the stacking in the pit stop and the penalty. That's all part of it, obviously. But the second half, I think I started to get a better feeling on the softs in the clean air. And then on the inters as well, I felt a lot more comfortable than yesterday, that's for sure. During the race, Lawson got into a brawl with Ferrari driver Charles Leclerc. They had multiple wheel-to-wheel -wheel battles. That was quite eventful, to be fair. I think he was struggling a lot on the softs. And every time I'd pass him, he just passed me back down the straight. So it was a little bit frustrating, but obviously it's good to get experience. I feel like I had the experience of every situation in that race, with multiple pit stops, wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, rain, dry. So it was a good learning experience, Lawson concluded. So what are your thoughts on Red Bull's new master plan? Could you see Ricardo or Sonoda driving a Red Bull next year and see Lawson taking over the empty Alpha Tauri seat? But that isn't all that's happening at Alpha Tauri, as their lack of performance is also worthy of attention and now steps will be taken to remedy the team's lack of speed, many of which will be done over the following year. So next year's lineup will have a car that's supposed to battle the midfield. The fans, a team, placed ninth in the rankings last year and might finish last this season. Sonoda was unlucky not to get more points, but the AT04 is obviously one of the weakest machines on the grid. Even Williams now competes for points, but Alpha Tauri frequently relies on retirements from quicker cars. This lack of performance is unacceptable to Red Bull for a squad created to nurture and develop new talent. Yuki Tsunoda or Liam Norson, who substitutes the injured Daniel Ricciardo, can run strong races but come up short. Though evaluating drivers closer to the back is conceivable, gauging a driver's pace is simpler in a competitive car. Helmut Marco frequently comments on the subject, but this time it's AlphaTauri CEO Peter Bayer who outlines the strategy. In the future, we'll get everything that is permitted by the regulations from Red Bull Racing, and we will also come closer to Red Bull in terms of car design," he said. Italy will remain as our headquarters. Everything that is currently happening in Italy, production, personal development and finances, will remain there. We already have a small location in Bicester, England, and the current plan is actually to move the aerodynamics design team to Milton Keynes. Alpha Tauri must find strategies to be competitive in a competition, where six cars have won podiums in 2023. Given Red Bull's supremacy in F1, it is strange that its sibling team is floundering so badly. This disparity has been clearly identified and should be remedied beginning in 2024. So next year's lineup could have everything they once hoped for at Alpha Tauri, a car that might be able to battle for podium spots at some races. What more could they wish for?